Hi, welcome back again. And today we're going to do round two on the uh, 6139 that I had in a video the other day. And in this one, I'm going to get it pulled apart and get it ready for servicing. So, if you recall in the last video, we sort of had a look over the general condition and decided that it wasn't too flash, but we're going to be able to uh, fix it overall. Um, so what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to start by taking off the rotor. Now, you remember as well from the last video that this one was missing the crystal and all sorts of stuff. So, there's going to be a lot of bits that we're going to need to put in there. <clears throat> so, we'll just start by taking off the rotor. And there we've got the back of the movement. So, I think, I can't remember if the balance wheel was any good. Uh, it does have a bit of a swing on it, but it's sort of hard to say whether it's uh, just gummy or there's something wrong with the hairspring. But we'll determine that. Actually, we might just take that off now and um, just go from there, just so that uh, I can't damage it uh, inadvertently uh, later on when I'm taking other parts off. So these have a, you'll see these have a um, a really long bridge for the for the balance wheel which I think in my opinion looks quite high quality so that movement that is based on the 6119 only sort of has half of that and we'll just take that off now I'm going to take out the uh, the jewels later on because they're just really too difficult to do on camera and I think that one just needs another turn on it Now, I'm doing this sort of from the side, which I think I've probably mentioned about a hundred times, which just makes it a little bit tricky. So now we can take that off. And I'll just try and get that more sort of in view. So normally what I like to do is grab it just by the spoke there, uh, just to get it out and then take that off. So we'll just get this on the bench and I'll see if I can zoom in on it a bit more. There we go. So from what I can see, it uh, seems to look okay. So I can't uh, can't see any damaged coils there. So I think we should be good just to give that a clean and reuse that. But if it plays funny buggers or anything, and that's uh, the Australian vernacular, if it plays funny buggers or anything when I'm uh, trying to uh, regulate it and stuff like that, I'll just replace it. Um, usually I don't. Sp I spend very little time messing around with hairsprings because the uh, the amount of time that you spend on them as opposed to the uh, reward that you get from getting them to work again usually doesn't pay off um, and especially with the size of these hairsprings they're quite small so trying to manipulate them or anything is difficult and I could be there for an hour stuffing around with it and it still doesn't work properly so in most cases when these are stuffed I just get another one from a good movement so that's one of the things with this game. I mean, it's really, uh, really, it's in the parts. So, there's a guy on one of the forums that used to say that all the time, but um, it really is. Um, if you have the parts, you're going to be able to repair these for quite some time to come. And the good things with these is because they were based off the 6119 movement, there's literally most of the parts interchange. Um, there's only a few things really that you can't pull from one to the other. Now, just while I've got it up this side as well, I'm just going to take the auto winding frame off, which will allow us to sit the movement flat. And that's just two screws. Now, the stupid thing with this thing is, is that they put a really fine thread on the two screws that go on this part. Now, why they did that is totally beyond me, but it really makes it a, a headache when, you, um, when you're when uh, you putting them back together because you've got to find the two oddball screws. And 
these movements have several other screws that look the same but have a different thread and of course if you try to if you try to put one of the other ones in uh, what ultimately happens is that the um, it cuts a new thread and the new threads actually thicker than the thread that's supposed to be in there and it damages it so we really want to try and avoid that now I'm just going to take the movement out now and I'm just going to take the dial off so we spoke about this one last time the dial looks rough it's got heaps of dust on it and stuff but it's actually in relatively good condition so I think after uh, cleaning all the dirt and dust and stuff off and then relooming it we're actually going to end up with quite a good watch now the sweep hand looks like it's slightly bent as well um, it's a little bit hard to say I'll have to look at that under some magnification and really determine that but uh, yeah we're just going to go ahead and take that off now I think one of the hands is already loose and I'm just going to use a plastic poker on that just to manipulate it and that way I don't damage anything so that is the key here is to not damage anything so now I'm going to take the hands off and my preferred method with this is a bit of an old plastic bag now I've tried lots of ways of doing this and so far this is the only method that I'm really happy with um, I have tried the Bergian uh, dial protectors before but I don't like them because they're quite thick and uh, the, edge of the edges of the plastic are quite sharp as well so if you've got a fine finish it can potentially scratch the dial finish or if you've got a matte finish on the dial uh, it could burnish uh, part of the dial which we don't really want to do so just to get the hands off I prefer the, pest, the Presto tool just to get those off and then to do the sub dial hand uh, just that guy there I like to put the plastic over and then use the Horatech hand pullers which are just these guys here um, so what's the part number on those it doesn't have it on the tool but uh, I found these quite good I had an old set of uh, Bergian hand pullers and um, they were okay but I just have had a lot more success with the Horatech ones so I've just stuck with them and then they weren't very expensive as well I think they were I think 60 Australian dollars which with the way that the Australian dollar is at the moment works out to I think 40 US or something so for a tool that's going to last you a lifetime it uh, was a very small investment now when doing these and I may just have to take this off of camera for a sec I'm gonna have a go at it but if I can't get them under I'm gonna to have to do it off camera and looks like I've got it so with these you've really got to get them right to the edge of the um, right really in contact with the tube on the hand reason being that if you don't you're actually pulling on the uh, the brass part of the hand rather than the, um, the tube and the boss underneath and what will happen is the hand will separate from that tube and boss and then you've got another repair job of trying to put that back on uh, and that's making the assumption it does go back on so if you look under there really what you're trying to do uh, or what you're trying to achieve is you're trying to get the, uh, the hand puller just under that little uh, boss part now if you get them under there and pull them off you're not going to damage the hand so that's really the goal here and the other goal is not to lose it so I'm actually just going to pick that up with Rodico rather than tweezers so it doesn't ping off into the corner of the room all right so now we have the hands off and I'm just going to take the dial off which is removed by two screws on the side and that will now just drop off and we have the calendar side of the movement there now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get one of my movement holders and just move it over to that now 
uh, just to make life a bit easier. And it doesn't really matter which way we put this in for this. So there we go. So we have the calendar side right there. Now that's that uh, C clip that's on the top. The way I prefer to get those is just to get a small screwdriver under the edge and then just twist slightly and then move a little bit more, twist again, and a bit more, twist again. And that comes off without being bent or damaged. Now with these as well, you've got to make sure that they go back on the right way. So the flat side goes on the top, and this is going to be difficult picking up at an angle. So the flat side goes at the top, and the chamfered side, if I can just get that on there without dropping it, uh, goes at the bottom. And the reason the chamfered side goes at the bottom is because then you can actually get a screwdriver under it again. So, I don't know if you can see that there, but there's a little chamfer under there. And the whole idea of that is so that you can get a screwdriver under there. So now we're just going to take off the day disc. And you can see the rest of the calendar side there. So you can see it's slightly yellowed, so that's all just dirt and oil and who knows what else. So we'll just take off the calendar disc now when I find the right screwdriver. Okay. So here we go. Now all these screws in this movement have actually were already loose. So that suggests that someone's been in there before and had a go at doing something with it. Quite often what I find with these is that in the past, rather than repairing the movement properly, what someone's done uh, to do a cheap repair is just loosen off some of the screws, which will get it going again, but I mean, it's not going to keep time or anything like that. But bearing in mind that these were not worth a lot of money for a long time, um, I guess, you know, $20 repair or whatever was uh, was a good idea for some people but now that they're a bit more collectible it's not doesn't really cut it so we're just going to take off the calendar wheel there and there's several variations on this so uh, there's some that have this metal disc on the top and the later ones actually have a plastic part for that and one of the problems with the plastic part is that it can bend and then not work so well. But it's fairly uncommon for it to happen. But you've got to remember you're talking about 1970s nylon here, so it's going to be a problem. Eventually, anyway. So we've got a lot of stuff off now. I'll keep going here. Okay, so we've still got a few bits left. Now I'm just going to rotico that because it's going to fly off. There we go. Now I'll just get the cannon pinion off as well. Alright, so now we've just got the uh, keyless works and the uh, quick set lever, really. Right, so now we're down to the keyless works, and we're going to get through that pretty quick. So, 
two screws. Now the two screws on this actually have a satin finish on top rather than a polished finish so that's how you know they're supposed to go there. Um, it doesn't really matter but I like to try and keep everything the way it's supposed to be. Great thing with these is they actually made the uh, the spring as part of the part of the yoke so there's no part to lose. It's fantastic. Now Alright, so we've now stripped that side. So that spring doesn't need to come out, that can stay in, but uh, everything else is off. And you can see there the, uh, the minute counter shaft is just there. There's your sweep hand. And you can see the, uh, the good old barrel arbor there as well. So that's almost guaranteed to have wear on it. So we'll just flip that over and we'll do the other side. Now this is an A variant of the movement, which you can see there. So the B variant movement has a different setup around the hammer. Now the reason they revised this on the B movement was that pin there which interfaces with the hammer, which is right there, uh, gets wear on it. And when it gets wear on it, it doesn't set back to zero all the time. So that was one of the big faults with this movement. So the B series movement has a different setup. It's got a much larger area on that pin. So there's a larger contact area, which in theory should reduce the amount of wear to it. And it also uses a hardened steel part so it's much less prone to wear. Anyway, we'll get this finished with, so we'll just take the uh, top plate off there. And this is loose as well. So almost certainly someone's uh, done a bodge on this. So that's gone. So there you can see the hammer. And I'm not sure what that is. So I'm not sure if someone's polished it or what, or it's had corrosion. I, I just really can't tell. But anyway, that doesn't really bother us too much right now as we're pulling it apart. So I'm just going to rotico the. Uh, spring here, the hammer spring, because it does have a tendency to, to leave on a permanent holiday. Alright, so we remove that without losing it, which is a, a good step forward. So then we've got the hammer off. Now we'll take out the minute recorder wheel and Next, we're going to take the operating lever spring off. Now, these are not as bad, but if you've got Rodico on there, you're not going to lose it. That's the trick here. Now, I'm just going to take off the ratchet wheel. There we go. And now the operating levers, I might just actually change screwdriver for that. Okay. So these, once you've got those off, these come off pretty easy. Alright, so I'm not going to take off the, uh, the the pillar wheel there. That can come off later. So that's what we've got left now. Just zoom this out a smidge. There we go. So we're just going to get this done.
And again, all these screws were loose as well. And there we've got the center wheel. Sorry, the, I had a screwdriver in my mouth. The center wheel and the third wheel and the barrel are left. So that's the center wheel off. The third wheel is off. And the other center wheel is coming off now. Well, it will in a sec. Just going to take that off. Take off the bridge. Check out the barrel. That click spring doesn't. The click spring doesn't need to come off. Um, it just depends sort of how you prefer to do things. So you can see there's some green stuff around the barrel arbor. So that's a reasonable sign that it's shot. Which is uh, yeah, Australian vernacular for not being any good. So we'll just take the uh, pallet cock off as well. go. So now we're just going to remove the pallet fork, escape wheel, and the other center wheel. So there we go. Now we're back down to a down to a bare plate and that can all go on the cleaning machine and get clean now. Alright, thanks for watching and uh, I'll do another update on this uh, watch again pretty soon and uh, you'll see how it comes along and comes back to life. Alright, thank you.